Now going on to number seven, Institute Leadership. Dimming's message here, sounds simple again, uh, is to help people do a better job. That sounds like a smart idea, but help people do a better job. There are tons, tons of managers out there who are doing everything they can to set employees up for failure. This might be on purpose or just the, the nature of their, their little operation. Always putting out fires, everything is last minute, there's surprises, the equipment doesn't work, uh, the processes have to be changed up to, you know, to put up with the raw materials or the equipment. And we're setting, and the employees are in a state of fear, confusion, chaos, and the manager is setting them up for failure. Deming's message here is to help people do a better job, not get in the way of them doing a good job. He goes on to say, don't be a judge, but be a coach. Here again, we're trying to help people to be uh, good at what they do and to provide quality for our customers. <clears throat> he wants us to move from numbers to quantity, quality, uh, move from quantity to quality. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, move from management to leadership. Instead of just being that operational supervisor, be the coach, be the mentor. It helps if you move from theory X to theory Y. If you assume that people can be better and are good and want to work and enjoy what they do eight hours or 10 hours a day, uh, it's easier to be a leader. If you stick with the theory X, the assumption that people are bums, will want to get away with everything, then you're in the mindset of a manager. <clears throat> Provide the training tools and workplace that allow for quality. The workplace. The workplace just isn't, isn't air conditioning or you know the setting of the workplace. It's the workplace, the attitude, the, the culture, the values that all support quality. If you have the negativity in the building, quality is going to suffer. If you have fear in the building, quality is going to suffer. Not only provide the training tools and workplace that allow for quality, but be mindful that there might be obstacles to quality that need to be removed. Just as we've mentioned, the fear, uh, the toxic culture, internal competition, lack of communications, all of those are obstacle to having an operation that produces quality. Now, uh, here again, you say, well, that's not so deep. But listen to this quote, a person who isn't performing is either in the wrong position or under bad management. Wow, that really should wake up all managers. A person who's not performing is either in the wrong position or under bad management. A person might not be talented in doing something. They might not be good at this or good at that. Then they're in the wrong position. Maybe they're not customer focused as a personality. They're in the wrong position. Maybe they're not strong. They're in the wrong position. Maybe they're not good at math. They're in the wrong position. But otherwise, if they are in the right position and not performing, they are under bad management. There's only two options here. <clears throat> Either in the wrong position or under bad management. Now that's got to wake up some folks out there, anybody listening to this. So then you ask yourself the question, if an employee gets a six out of 10 on their performance review, what does the manager get? They're supposed to be a, a coach. Uh, they're trying to, they're supposed to be helping people do a better job. They're supposed to be supplying all the things that are needed for quality and doing a good job. So if the employee's in the right position and they're not performing, what's up? Who's to blame? Is it the employee or is it the system and the management, the culture, norms, and all of that that the employee works with? So that should be a wake-up call to all managers out there. 
If an employee gets a 6 out of 10 on the performance review, what does the manager get? They fail too. Going up to here, either they're in the wrong position or under bad management. <clears throat> For me, that really uh, highlights just what dimming is getting at and, and uh, how important is this simple little statement is. He also goes on to say, no one has to change. Survival is an option. Wow, man. Nobody has to change. Survival is an option. Survival is an option. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, if we have the manager who turns into the leader and is focused on quality, not blaming people, helping people get uh, the job done, setting them up for success, not failure. All, everything's provided. We've removed all the obstacles to quality. Now we're in a state of uh, theory-wide, and we're in the white room. If you have another company whose white room looks like this, I wonder who's going to win. These people in the white room have an open attitude. They're comfortable with change. They want customer satisfaction. They want to improve. There's team spirit in the building. If that's one, one company and the other company is chaos, confusion, fear, hatred, there's no hate over here. There's no hate. We're covered up with hate over here. Managers get all moody and set people up for failure just to put them back in their place. Who? Which company is going to win? Which one should win? I'm going with the white room. There's no hate over here. It's about quality. This, I guess, is about the manager's ego. That might be the, the focus over here. So, no one has to change. Survival is optional. This person doesn't have to change. Nobody's saying you have to change. This person did change. Who's going to win? Who's going to survive? This person. So, there we go. Institute leadership. Move from management over to leadership. Help people. Uh, feed into that intrinsic motivation. Stop relying on the extrinsic motivators. Yeah, get passion. Passion and caring. No hate. And now we got the ship going in the right direction. These people, I don't know how they're still in business. There's a lot of businesses out there, you know, that look like they're doing well, but they're really not. Are we going to have any volunteers over here? Any passion? Any caring? No. It's hard, it's hard to have that when you have fear in the building as well. So, no one has to change. Survival is optional. If your competition is over in the white room, and your place looks like this, good luck.